Not today, I am in my teaching position. I'm at my little teaching desk where my son and I did a lot of our practice. And I wanna explain a really, really important concept to you, which is which vowel sounds you should teach first. This is one of the most common questions I get. And we're gonna make it super, super, super simple so you don't have to stress and worry about it anymore. You know what to teach first and what to teach next, okay? So to start, just to get the basics out of the way, each of these letters is a vowel, A, E, I, O, and U, okay? There are short vowel sounds, which sound like this, A, E, I, A, and A. And there are long vowel sounds where generally the vowel is gonna say its name, and it's gonna say U, or sometimes U, O, I, E, and A. So you can see for each of these letters, it can say a short sound like A or a long sound like A. And if you are first teaching your little one how to read, it can be confusing to know, do you teach this says A, do you teach it says A, or do you teach both, okay? So let's just make this very, very simple. When your little one is first learning how to read, you are going to teach them the short vowel sounds. A, E, I, A, A, okay? Now, there are two reasons why we start with the short vowel sounds, okay? Reason number one, the short vowel sounds are generally easier, okay? We'll get to that in a second when we talk about the long vowels, but generally they're easier. And reason number two is when they're first learning how to read, these sounds are going to be a lot more common. So if I show you two words, you can tell me which word you think your little one is gonna be more likely to see in an early reading book. The word hat or the word hate. Much, much, much more likely to see words with the short vowel sound than they are to see words where you have the second vowel that's modifying the first, or when you have two different vowels together making one sound, right? That's all long vowel stuff. It gets a little complicated. So we start with the short vowel sounds because they are easier and they are more common. Think of any beginning book like a phonics book or a Bob book or a picture book, they're much, much, much more likely to see these short vowel sounds, okay? So when I'm teaching a kid, whether they're 18 months or 18 years, I don't care the age, I'm not trying to confuse them. I'm not trying to teach them the very first time they see it. Sometimes this says a, ah, and sometimes it says a, ah, and there's all these different ways to make it say a. Ah. I just wanna teach them this sound says a, ah, because when they start to read, that sound is going to say a, ah, okay? Eventually, they are going to need to know the situations in which it says the long vowel sound. Eventually, but not right away. Right away, they're gonna to need to know that short vowel sound, okay? Now, I wanna show you a couple examples of long vowel sounds. And then I'm gonna share an analogy for you to help tie this all together so this makes a ton of sense for you moving forward and you know what to teach, okay? So let's take this A card that we've been focusing on and I am just gonna write it right here on my board, right? We have A, it says A, ah, okay? Now, part of the reason why I say long vowels are harder is because if I add an I, it doesn't say A, ah, I, A and I together say A. If I add a Y, it says A, right? So I get the point. If I add uh, an R, now it says R. If I add an E on the front, now it says E, like in the word read. But if I add a B there, now it says E, like in the word bread, right? This A, can be part of the E sound, the F sound, the A sound with an I, the A sound with a Y. We can put a bunch of different letters around the A 
to change and to modify its sound. That's pretty advanced. At the very beginning, I showed you a word where the A is normally saying ah, but I can put another letter here, right? And now all of a sudden it comes backwards and it makes that ah say A. There are a ton of rules, but if that's the first thing you're doing with your little one, they're gonna be confused, they're not gonna get it. It's not gonna make sense, okay? Start with these short vowels first, and then we'll get to all of these rules later. There's time, trust me, okay? So you can think of it like this, and this will hopefully wrap everything together nicely here, okay? Let's say, instead of teaching the letter sounds, okay? Instead of teaching these vowels and all the other letter sounds, what we're doing is we're teaching our little one how to cook, and we want them to be an amazing chef. There's all these different ingredients at the store. There's all these different things to choose from. But let's say we're gonna start and we're gonna try and teach them how to cook eggs, right? That's kind of like going through your full list of sounds and there's a lot of different options and then starting with those vowels, right? You pick out the thing that you wanna teach them first. Once you've picked that thing, so we've picked eggs and we're like, okay, we're gonna pick eggs. We wanna teach them how to cook eggs. How many different dishes can you make with eggs? A ton, right? You can make quiche, I don't know how, but you can make quiche. You can scramble them, you can fry them, you can like put them in a souffle and that's gonna be like super advanced and super tough, but I think you can do it. You can do like meringue and just do the egg whites. You can put them in mixed drinks. Like there's all this different stuff you can do with an egg. But you're trying to teach them to cook. Are you gonna show every single thing you can do? Or are you gonna show them, here's the most common way to do it. Here's the easiest way to cook it. Here's how you fry an egg, right? Because if you sit down with them day one and you try going through 30 different recipes with eggs, is your little one going to learn 30 recipes? Or are they gonna get frustrated, hate cooking, and feel like they can never do it again? You tell me, right? It's the same thing we do with anything else in life. We pick what is the most common thing. What's the basics? What do they need to learn first? And that's what we teach. Here's how you fry an egg. Once they've mastered that, they're ready for more. We're like, here's how you scramble an egg. Once they've mastered that, they're ready for some more. Here's how you hard boil an egg, right? We go step by step by step. We take them through a progression and eventually they're gonna learn all of those different recipes. They're never gonna learn them if we show them all at once, only if we put them in an order. With letter sounds, it's the same way. Eventually, they're gonna learn all of the different long vowel combinations, but if we teach them all at the same time, they're gonna learn none of it. Short vowels first. Once they've mastered them, we move to the long vowels. And as we're teaching the long vowels, we go through sound by sound by sound. A and I says A, we've got it down, okay. A and Y says A, we've got it down, okay. E, I, G, H together says A, we've got it down, okay. And we move step by step by step, the same way we would if we were teaching them how to cook, the same way we would if we were teaching them anything else in life. So I hope this makes complete sense for you. I hope you understand and can trust that these are gonna be the sounds they see and these are also gonna be easier to teach them and please have patience here because once they've mastered these short vowels, we're gonna have lots of time to get those long vowel sounds down, okay? But we're just getting started. When we get started, we start with the basics, okay? Hope this video was super helpful. If you wanna check out my resources, please do feel free. Otherwise, it really like sincerely helps the channel. This is a new channel. It helps out when you like the video, when you subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Do whatever you want there. It's gonna help me reach more families. And I sincerely hope this video was valuable to you. And until next time, I will talk to you soon.